Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Barry Cooper, who is from the Center for Financial Regulation and Inclusion, or SEMFRI. Barry, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now, I'd like to start off by perhaps we could talk a little bit about your experience in your organization in the area of digital currency or central bank digital currency. It, it, is, it is a while. We, we, we keep a lookout for um, uh, um, instruments and, and uh, payment systems that can benefit particularly developing economies. That's been on, on our radar. And we started looking at the uh, um, deeper research in from 2016 onwards. And uh, that culminated in our, our first note, our first uh, uh, exploratory note in to look uh, into the, the risks and benefits, particularly with a, a uh, developing economy uh, mind. Uh, mindset, and then um, that prompted us to look at particularly mobile money and the implications for for different types of uh, being agnostic to the different types um, of of uh, D uh, CBDC or uh, DFC um, uh, overlaid on on mobile money schemes, typical mobile money schemes that we found in uh, in our research, and uh, we, we that was a very interesting uh, piece of research be because it, it pointed us to the simplification of something that was quite complex and had grown up haphazardly in, in various ju jurisdictions and was quite meaningful for those jurisdictions. So let's focus on central banks. Why should central banks consider issuing digital currency? Yeah, so, so that that is a, I mean, some, some should and some most should uh, consider, but, m but some should really just Consider it very, very well, depending on all the pre preconditions. Uh, what is it? What is um, uh, th that present themselves in, in each jurisdiction? But typically, um, what it can do is it can tr uh, it, it can uh, bridge the gap between um, a, a cash economy and a formalized economy, and that's very, very important because in most developing economies, you have um, upwards of 80% 80, 80 plus of the transactions in that economy done in cash. Cash is very expensive. Cash is difficult to to transact over over distance. And so a CBDC has a lot of those benefits, but it comes with a lot of health warnings as well. Now you're based in Cape Town. What's the financial uh, landscape like there? In, in Cape Town, we have the... the, the I mean, in South Africa, obviously, in, not in, just in Cape Town itself, yeah. Cape Town and South Africa, we, we've got the full spectrum. We've got from 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 very indigent people to to very affluent, and so it gives us a, a really good uh, insight into into how these different systems uh, interoperate at different market levels and with different different uh, needs. Um, and so that, that that's provided the impetus to to look at uh, other developing economies. Now we mostly work in developing economies. We do hardly do, do anything uh, in South Africa. And. Uh, I presume that the uh, the, the the differences are are, are quite quite uh, f f quite varied. I mean, in terms of uh, developing economies and developed economies. Yes, and and particularly um, uh, th what we find important is not to take a developed economy mindset and try and cut and paste it into a developing context. Context really matters, and and um, uh, harmonising a, a a technology or or a, a system into a, a developing world is very intricate. You need to really understand how that economy works and how things um, uh, need to get sewn together. What are the main um, challenges, uh, let's say, facing central banks in issuing digital currencies? Well, there are a number, um, particularly in the developing world, um, capacity or expertise. Uh, typically what happens is that as you develop expertise in the developing world, they, they migrate to the developed world. So it's, 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 it's getting their core expertise there, but it's also getting um, the, uh, the prerequis prerequisite uh, conditions like uh, ITC infra infrastructure, communications infrastructure is, is vitally important to support it. Um, you need to look at offline, online capabilities. Those, 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 are, those are all important and those aren't usually problems you find to a, a significant degree in developed worlds. Um, and finally, in what areas of digital currency are standards required for central banks, and how do you think that the output of the uh, digital fiat currency focus group or ITU could help bridge the standards gap? Well, st st rigid standards are difficult to employ in, in developing uh, markets, um, and the, the ITU focus group is, is assisting with, with uh, creating guidelines of guidance that, that are not as rigid as standards, but that, that can, can, can um, uh, in, in a sense, creates the, the potential for interoperability or harmonization between different countries because ultimately um, DFC or digital fiat currency at some point will interoperate between countries. Right, well, Barry, thank you very much for joining us in the studio today. We hopefully will catch up with you again at some stage in the near future. And, uh, and thank you for, for uh, your work in the focus group as well. Thank you very much. Cheers.